but I just love it because, you know, it's always been in my heart. It's always been in my mind, and it's something that I live for. I can't stop doing it, and, I, you know, I just want to share everything with the world. Shout out to the brother Talik that made the, 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 the video um, about supporting me uh, yesterday. Shout out to you. Um, I just want to thank you to all my new subscribers. Thank you. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Today's video is brought to you by a donation from a subscriber. He wanted to know why don't the so-called African American resemble Africans from Africa? Now while doing the research, I fell down a rabbit hole that reaffirmed my beliefs that the African American is an artificial construct. And as a result, I thought it would be best suited to title this video, Why Did They Create the African American? Believe it or not, the African American is indigenous to the Americas. This includes North America, South America, and its surrounding islands. But unfortunately, the African American would rather hold firm and romanticize the root slave narrative his oppressor gave him. In my video, Why Black Children Inherit Dust, I informed the African American he's not really a citizen. I received a lot of backlash for that statement, so before I begin this presentation, I want to briefly elaborate on the quasi-citizen status of the African American. Now, as I stated many times before, the Dred Scott case states no person of African descent, whether or not emancipated from slavery, could be a citizen of a state. Some people proudly argue that the 14th Amendment granted them citizenship, but my argument is that no Supreme Court case or documentation directly overruled the Dred Scott case. For example, we have the case of George Stenney, who was the youngest person in American history to be executed, and in 2014, a judge directly overturned the ruling of the conviction of that young boy. Someone has to explain how we have presidential candidate Mike Huckabee that stated that he thinks that there's a law out there somewhere that says black people are not human. And on another occasion, he states that black people aren't technically citizens. In other words, African Americans are citizens only in name, but not law. Then we have MSNBC Harris Perry stating that blacks are still not seen as American citizens. Even to this day, we still have whites-only swimming pools and segregated proms. How much do these people have to spit in the face of the African American for him to get the message he is not a true citizen? James Lowen wrote a book illustrating that in America today, we still have sundown towns where if the so-called African American citizen gets caught after sundown, he will be killed. For those who still boastfully claim that the 14th Amendment made them citizens, how do you explain the Naturalization Act of 1870 that came after it? What was the purpose of that act? How do you explain the fact that as recent as 2013, we have African Americans still marching and protesting for Voting Rights Act? If y'all are citizens and the 15th Amendment gave y'all rights to vote, why do y'all need a Voting Rights Act? The black American was once a productive and innovative member of society, but now he has become the African American an artificial construct slowly self-destructing and driving himself into extinction. The only duty we owe to history is to rewrite it, rewrite it, rewrite it, Oscar Wilde. What we need to do is flood the world with new African histories that contain our European perspectives only. What we need to do is flood the world, flood the world, flood the world. The 14th Amendment to the Constitution, ratified in 1868 following the Civil War. As barbaric as it may sound today, the black slaves, prior to the conclusion of the Civil War, were legally considered to be property, with none of the rights or privileges of free-born people, only duties. The money interests took advantage of America's desire to free the slaves and found a way to use the swiftly adopted post-war constitutional amendments to enslave all of the people. The deceit is in the wording of both 13th and 14th Amendments. You will note that the 13th Amendment provides that neither slavery nor involuntary servitude shall exist within the United States. But why the emphasis on involuntary servitude? Isn't it the same thing as slavery? Sure it is. But they had to mention the concept of involuntary servitude because they wished to retain another type of slavery, 
voluntary servitude. Voluntary servitude is an ancient and established concept. It was the way serfs became subjects to their lords during feudal times in England and other European countries. It was a way for free men to earn a living at a time when all property was held by a select few, and thus anyone who wanted to farm and support their family had first to agree to be subject to a lord of the land. Our forefathers hated this concept and designed our constitution to exclude titles of nobility, making all Americans sovereign. The 14th Amendment turned the intention of the founders on its ear by making voluntary servitude a requirement for former slaves to gain the rights already guaranteed to free-born United States citizens. When the slaves were released from their involuntary servitude following the war, their status was changed from that of being property to that of being a person, but being a person still entitled them to none of the rights associated with citizenship. So the 14th Amendment ostensibly was written to provide the former slaves with the same constitutional rights of free-born American citizens, but only if they agreed first to become subject to the jurisdiction of the corporate United States, making oneself paramountly, that is, first subject to the jurisdiction of the laws of the United States, however, limits access to parts of the Bill of Rights, as we'll explain in a moment. But first remember, anyone who voluntarily subjects himself to the laws or jurisdiction of another is, in every way, obligated to abide by the terms of any contracts or laws established by whomever establishes the rules of the contract. In simple terms, this meant that the former slaves became subjects first to the United States and secondly to the state in which they lived. They had no sovereignty whatsoever. This status had never existed in the United States prior to that time. The 14th Amendment created a new class of citizenship in the United States, a second class citizenship. Up until 1868, every American was a paramount citizen of their state, and by virtue of that, also a citizen of the United States with full individual sovereignty as guaranteed by Amendments 9 and 10 in the Bill of Rights. But so-called naturalized citizens, or 14th Amendment citizens, are paramountly subject to all laws of the United States, and, having no status as freeborn citizens, have no access at all to the unenumerated rights retained for the people by Articles 9 and 10 of the Bill of Rights. That's because, in order to get any rights at all, they had to subject themselves to the jurisdiction of the corporate United States, which left them no unenumerated rights. All right, so now let's take a look at why they created the African American. Now there's some bullet points that I want to discuss. The first is describing the African American, why they created the African American, why the African American is not African, comparing pictures, creating zombies, dogs lives matter, and lastly, our final thoughts. Now let's first describe the African American. The African American is a creation of European think tanks and secret societies. He has been disconnected from nature and in general he has no survival skills. If he were to be placed suddenly in the wilderness, he would not survive. The African American does not produce his own food, he does not discover, mine, and refine any natural resources, and sadly, he does not even educate his own children. By and large, the African American hates the truth and shuns the occult, while his oppressors use the occult to stay in power. The average African American is cold-blooded and brutal towards each other, but loving towards foreigners and his oppressors. For the most part, he does not know who his enemy is and tries to be accepted by the people that treat him the worst. The typical African American does not know where in Africa he's from. Typically, the African American is an advocate for diversity, but no one wants to include him. In general, the African American women have been stripped of shame, modesty, and are racially dead. For the most part, they hate black genetics and are currently the number one killer of the black race by way of abortion. The African Americans that don't fit this description are unfortunately in the minority. In general, the African American males are simps, manginas, and white knights. 
Currently, they have reached a new low by suggesting the black woman is God. The African American men that don't fit this description are unfortunately in the minority. The so-called African American will always give excuses why he can't break free and be independent. He is easily discouraged if a roadblock is put in his way, and if a black leader gets assassinated, so does the mission. The African American shuns the idea of monolithic thought. While foreigners use monolithic thought to practice group economics to milk the African American community while boycotting it at the same time. The African American has no free will and can be easily controlled by using entertainers, politicians, pastors, and black women. The aforementioned are all gatekeepers to white hegemony. They help keep the status quo and prevent change. The artificial construct African American is a creation similar to Frankenstein an artificial European but stripped of its language, culture, humanity, and lineage. Now let's talk about why they created the African American. Simply put, the African American was created to slowly self-destruct and rid the world of himself so foreigners can set up an environment that is conducive to their way of living and help drive the African American into extinction. The bankers have skillfully created the African American. The main purpose of the African American is to build the empires of others and to take the earnings he makes from building to buy those people's products. Alright, so now let's talk about why the African American is not African. The African American holds on to the theory that all life came from Africa, yet Europeans, Asians, and other races don't claim to be African. Nothing about the African American is African. He has no African language, customs, religion, no African citizenship, and to make matters worse, the African American can't name what part of Africa he's from. Ironically, the people in the continent of Africa don't call themselves African. Only the black American holds firm to this title. Other races don't claim to be associated to another race just based on skin color, hair texture, and phenotype. If the Europeans brought African slaves to America, humiliated and dehumanized them, why would they put them on the currency? Let's take a look at some images of black Americans on the US currency. If blacks were brought to America as slaves and had no rights and were seen as property, why did Europeans bother to create laws that stated interracial marriage is illegal, Indians and Africans are to be called Negro, and all non-Christians will be slaves? How exactly did African chattel slaves turn to slave owners themselves? It's well known that so-called black people had black slaves. This fact only makes sense if the black slave owners were native to the land and they had African slaves. The African American continues to run away from the fact that he's indigenous to America. Here are a few questions that the African American will refuse to answer. Where does the word African come from? Why don't the people in Africa call themselves African? If you're an African American, what part of Africa are you from? Since you believe the transatlantic slave narrative, where are the slave ships at? What force was cut down to build these slave ships? Where are the museums that are showcasing the slave ships? How did the slaves survive a one to three month trip across the Atlantic where it's freezing cold, where they're packed like sardines and surrounded by urine, blood, feces, and filth? Also, if more than half of the slaves died during the trip, that would mean there was no return on investment. So why continue using expensive slave ships? What would be more easier and logical? Transporting millions of people across the Atlantic or using the people that are already on the land? What African nation is claiming African Americans? Why has no African nation sought reparations for slavery? These questions will frustrate the average African American, and he will be either ready to fight you, curse you out, or run away. No matter how much education the African American receives, and no matter how many clues are given to him, he still wholeheartedly believes the narrative by his oppressor, that his roots are in Africa. Every religious belief given to the African American places him in a foreign land. The Moors point to their roots in Morocco, the Hebrew Israelites and Christians point to Israel, and the Nation of Islam point to Mecca. So in this section we're going to be comparing pictures, but I'm not going to be giving any commentary because I want people to compare for themselves and make up their mind if the African American is indeed African.
Oh, I have so much to cover. And I'm going to do it sort of fast. What I need to say is very simple. And so it shouldn't take a long time to explain what I need to explain. I am going to show us because there are those who say that the descendants of slaves born in America having dark skin, the people I call soul, whatever you call yourself, uh, black, negro, colored, African Americanist, um, Hebrew Israelite, black Muslim, whatever you want to call yourself. I'm talking about these persons. There are those who say that we are Africans. Okay. Then on the other side of the spectrum, we have those who say that we are the Native American people. And you see on social media, they are going back and forth we are Africans, and you you deny your African self. We are Native Americans. My grandmother was a full blown Black Cherokee, and they go back and forth and so and and whatever. Now I am going to show you in in a very simple way, and I want you to challenge, but you cannot do it because you cannot do it. This is exactly what produced the Negro. This is exactly what produced the African Americans. And you can keep hollering, I'm an African, all you want to. You can keep hollering, I'm a Native American, all you want to. You can be whatever you want. To. I'm going to show you right now, within the next 15 minutes, exactly what and who we are with no doubt you can't refute you can't debunk it's very simple straight to the point easy to understand this is what happened I'm gonna start off like this very very simple do you have your listening devices on can you hear can you, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? We're getting ready to do this. Simple example. You have dark skinned people. Whether it makes no difference, whether they are here already in the Americas or they are from Africa. It makes no difference. But what is clear is that these dark skinned people were not the same. Listen to me. Listen. Are you listening to me? These dark skinned people, whoever they were, they were not, not the same. Even today, all the people on the African continent and around the earth, they are not the same. Some of us are trying to put all dark skinned people into one category. You cannot do that because that's a lie. That's not true. It has never been true. Even to this day, these dark skinned people are not one. They are different. They do different things. They speak different languages. They believe different things. They are not the same. In fact, some of them hate each other. They have dark skin, but I don't like you. So, a quick, simple example. I'm told you now. Just using this, just using this as something to to look at. Here's a dark skinned person. Here's another dark skinned person. Different. Different. Here's another dark skinned person. Different. See? All, 
all these items that I have in my hand are different. They are not the same. But let us say they are all dark-skinned people, but they are different. And they don't like each other. I live over here. This one live over there. This one live on top of my head. <laughs> they are all different. And they don't like each other. They do not associate with one another. Now here, this is what happened to us. The Europeans found out that the dark-skinned people made good slaves. So they began to round up dark-skinned people. They did not give a damn about this one. They did not give a damn about that one. They did not give a damn about this one. They don't care. The whole thing that was on the minds of an enslaver is I need a slave. The enslaver does not give a damn whether you like the other slave. He does not care. He does not care about your differences. He does not care about your differences does not give a damn the only thing the enslaver cares about is making you a good slave so the enslaver regardless to whether he got the slave he did not give a damn whether the slave came from africa or the slave was already here he did not care he did not give a damn and because of slavery, all these who were different, many of them did not even like each other. Because of slavery, they were brought together by force. They were brought together by force. And they did not like each other. Most of, Some of them probably was even enemies. But because of slavery, they was forced together. So the original stock looked like this. This one, this one, and this one. The original stock. But after a certain period of time, they were forced to interbreed and mingle with one another. And as time goes by, in the meantime also, the slave master is raping this one the slave master is raping that one and raping all of them but as time goes on this one cannot stay pure this one cannot stay pure this one cannot stay pure they are becoming intertwined they are becoming mixed what is happening is that the slave master, in this case, the racist European Caucasian people, they are creating a brand new species of dark-skinned people. Because the babies, the offspring of these enslaved people don't look like this. Don't look like this. Don't look like this. They carry the traits of all of these put together. Do you understand? The Caucasian people, the Caucasian slave master, created a brand new people. And I believe there's a teaching talking about how long it actually took so this new breed of people will come into existence, they say it took 64 years. That's the question. How long did it take to take to go from these persons and make a slave? What is the purpose? The purpose is to make a perfect slave. 
just like you do a cow. They take a cow and they breed a cow. One cow they breed just for milk. Another cow they breed for meat. They put all these together. And during this process, the pink people, the white man, created a new black man. And he created a new black man. And he called that black man, these new dark-skinned people, black. Prior to the Europeans, there were no dark-skinned people that called themselves black or Africans. If you notice, when you watch Roots, they only called Kutekente an African. They did not call the mix, this new breed of people they had made, they did not call us, they did not call Fittler, they did not call Kutekente's wife, they did not call them Africans. They only called Kutekente an African. They called the others niggas, Negroes or whatever, black. Why didn't they call Fittler African? Because they knew that he was not. And so being a new breed of people, you can look like almost anybody because you carry the DNA. So it's true. You carry the DNA of, of, an, of a people that came from the African continent because that's part of you. The new species, the new dark-skinned people would carry the DNA of this one, the DNA of this one, the DNA of that, but they are no longer, they are not pure. You cannot call this new breed of people an African because they are not African. They never was born on African. They carry the DNA because their ancestors were that. Their ancestors was Native American or what, whatever these dark-skinned people was. You have their DNA, but you are no longer them. Just like a nectarine. Did you know a nectarine is a hybrid fruit? A hybrid fruit. A nectarine is a mix between a plum and a peach. It's a grafted fruit. But you cannot call a nectarine a plum. You cannot call a nectarine a peach. It has become its own fruit. It carries the DNA of a peach. It carries the DNA of a plum. But it's not a plum. It's not a peach. You're not Nigerian. You're not Somalian. You're not a native. You're not a Cherokee. You're not a Native American, you're not African, you are a Negro, you are black. That's what the slave master who created you named you. And we keep talking about African, but prior to this new dark-skinned species being created by the cracker, this Caucasian people, he called, and if you look it up, do your research, you'll see that he called the Native American people Negro first before us. That's because chances are the main original stock was already here. And then of course he did import some Africans and, and, and dark skinned people from the islands or whatever. But the original stock, the main original stock was already here. The Negro. And that's what he called us, Negro. Dark skin, black. The Caucasian man created you. So there is no direct connection for the nectarine to a peach. There's no direct connection for the nectarine to a plum because it's not that. There's no connection. It's a brand new species of fruit. The black man, the American black people. You and I, we are a brand new species of dark-skinned people, neither African, Native American, or nobody on this planet. We have no connection to nobody. We are a product of slavery. Just like the milk cow, just like the Angus beef cow, 
and the domesticated dogs and the different kinds of pigs and the fish you keep in your aquarium. We are hybrids. We are we are created by we are man made. We were not made by nature. We were not made by God. We were made by this cracker. Whether you like it or not, it's right there in your face. That's the bottom line. So just like the nectarine has its own identity, this black man, this dark-skinned person has to have your own identity. You will not be accepted as an African or Native American Indian or none of that because you are not that. And even if we were that because of our being domesticated, any domesticated animal that's in a zoo Chances are, if you put it out in the wild, it will not be accepted by the wild, the free animals that's already out there. They know this don't belong with us. Something is wrong with this domesticated creature. Oh, man. I know you don't like it. I know you don't like what I'm saying. But you can't get away. It's true. This is what has happened. This is what happened. You're having problems and confused in identity because you're trying to be something that you're not. You're not a peach. You're not a plum. You are a nectarine. What's wrong with a nectarine? People like nectarines. People like grapefruit. A grapefruit is not an orange. A grapefruit is not a lemon. It's a grapefruit. You trying to be something that you're not. We need to understand we need a new identity that relates just to us. Trying to be something that we're not. Trying to be go into places where, where we will never be accepted. Oh man. We are the Caucasian people's monster. They are Frankenstein. Frankenstein was the scientist. And then he created this monster. Frankenstein's monster. We are Frankenstein's monster. We are the creation of Caucasian people. That's the only God that we know of. And he is, oh, he is our father. Whether you like it or not. He is our father. That's why it's difficult for you to rebel against Caucasian people because they are our parents. Oh, I know. I know you upset. I know you can't handle the truth. But this process explains our behavior. This explains our behavior. This is why even when you scream black power, black power, you, you talk. But it's very difficult to rebel and go and go against daddy. This is why you want to put on the blonde wig. This is why you copy and try to be like them, because most children want to want to be like their parents. You want to grow up and be like your, your daddy. Ah! 
she hate me like others. Wow, wow, wow. Ooh, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's a lot to take in. It's unbelievable because we've been taught, oh, the black man is God and, and we kings and queens. No! You and I, we were created by slavery. We are a hybrid and a mutant from a dark-skinned people, unknown various dark-skinned people. And I would assume that the original stock was already here. Because of, mainly because the population increased so quickly. You could not do that. The population, the way that it was able to uh, just explode would be impossible if they were just shipping people all the way from the African continent, bringing them over here. This is impossible. It don't even make any sense. It takes months and months and months. And then after a time, I believe it was against the law to import slaves from other places. So the original stock, everything that was happening, it was already here. They used the dark-skinned people that was already here. And they was different. They called these people the red man. In fact, they had dark skin and they were not red. They were dark-skinned people and they had a red hue to their skin color. Most African Americans, black people, we, those of us who are dark, you might be dark, but you carry, you have a redness to your dark skin. Unlike many African people on the continent, because they've been in that hot climate for so long, they are dark skin, but many of them, the hue of their skin color is, is like blue or just totally dark. We are not like that. And the American so-called Negro, we produce all the colors of the rainbow. Some of us can pass for white. Some of us is dark as this remote control. We are very, we can be very, very dark. If you was Native American, if you was an African, you could not produce all these colors of the rainbow. Yes, the people on the continent of Africa, you see them, they, they produce various colors but not in one people this people look like this do your google search look at look at the various there's a difference between the people that's in nigeria 
and the ones who are in, in Somalia or the Congo, they don't produce all these colors like that. Only we do. Because that's how we was processed. We carry the DNA of many various different types of dark-skinned people and we also, because of rape, because of exploitation, we carry the DNA of the slave master. See, that, that goes right back to the reason why I swear, man, the reason why you have a problem with rebellion against Caucasian people because that's your mother, that's your father. These are the people that created you. Just like when you create a baby, you are those, you are the child's parents. The Caucasian people are our parents, whether you like it or not. They we don't know nothing outside of Caucasian people. We've never been independent. We've never moved out of their house. You get upset with mom and dad. But you really love mom and dad. They are our parents. That's why we love them so much. We have a closeness. They are our fathers. They have been abusive parents. Explorative parents, bad creators, nevertheless, they are all that we know. Just like a dog as a puppy being abused by his master, the puppy growing up only knows it's Masa. So no matter how the Masa slapped the puppy around, kicked the puppy in the backside, the puppy has a great love for the Masa, and we have a great love for America. We are so loyal to America. We are loyal to, to Caucasian people because they made us. This is all that we know. We have a hatred for one another because that's how we was made. They took different various dark-skinned people who did not woo, who did not like each other and forced us to interbreed and intermingle with one another. That's why you don't like me. You hate me and don't even really and don't even know. You hate that brother and sister. You hate that one. You don't even really know sometimes you don't even know the reason why you don't like somebody. It's because in the process, the creation of the so-called Negro, that's what happened to us. It's part of our nature to hate your, yourself because we were made out of hate. Not these other things that we have been taught in Afrocentric teachings. We never, we never was united. We never loved each other. We never was brothers and sisters. Do you understand? We have to become brothers and sisters. We must, we must Become a people, we must produce our own identity. You are not an African. You are not a Native American. So, when you understand the process and what really happened to us, all our behaviors, we want to be like daddy. Daddy is a drunk. That's why many of you, you get drunk because, you, because we see daddy. Caucasian people. The Caucasian people are whoremongers. Drunks, pedophile, everything daddy, mommy, and daddy do, we copy and do the exact same thing. They are our parents. They are the only real teachers we know of. Nobody else. We don't get no information from, chi from Chinese, from the Indians, from Mexicans, or nobody. It all comes from mommy and daddy, them. Even your Afrocentric uh, black scholarship teachers at the root of it. And many of you know this. Many of you have made videos of it. At the root of these so-called Afrocentric black scholarship teachers, at the root of it, the information came from a Caucasian person. What? How the hell, how the hell can a slave know about ancient Kemet? A slave know about Africa. What do a slave know about anything? 
You got it from your master. You got it from mama. You got it from daddy. Their educational system. At the root of it, that's where it all comes from. And that's why you say you black. Because you, you, you African. Because your mama and your daddy, the Caucasian people, taught you that. And then you have our historians and our scholars. They use their expertise to prove mommy and daddy is right. And just ignore the process that I just told us about what happened and caused us to come into being. We are a brand new version of a dark skinned people created to be the perfect slave. And we are. You will never find nobody on this planet with the type of slave mentality that the American Negro has. Slavery is all that we know. That's why. That's why we behave the way that we do. Mm, mm, mm. Woo, man. Woo is a hell of a thing. And if we Go back to the Frankenstein story. There was another part to the Frankenstein story where Frankenstein, he saw that his monster was lonely. So he created a woman. A, he created a mate for, for the monster that he created. But when the female was created, Oh, wow. Woo! It's just... Mm, mm, mm. When the female was created, she was in love with the creator. She... She had love for the masa. She, she had this thing for the... for the scientists. And the scientists made her look at her mate. The monster, Frankenstein. The Frankenstein, the monster. And she looked at the monster and she started screaming. She didn't want nothing to do with that. She just screaming. Ah, 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 ah. And this made the monster really, really angry. So it's no shock to me that you have a Tommy Sotomayor. It's no shock to me you have all these Black men that hate black women because the black women come out and they screaming because they don't want they and, and you're right they, they a lot of them they, they have this love for the master and don't love the black man and she's screaming well her screaming her head off thus you produce a Tommy Sotomayor it all makes sense when you look at it and so now what is happening in the movie with all that screaming and hollering what Frank, what the monster decided to do he looked at her and he said oh wow mm, mm, mm. he said we both we both dead so he began destroying the castle setting things on fire and he murdered, well, I guess, I don't know, both of them, they was made from dead parts, <laughs> dead people, whatever. But he destroyed the castle to kill him and this new woman that was created to be his mate. And they both died in the fire and the castle. See, that's what's happening right now. You and I, because we fail to understand we are a new people. We don't understand our own creation. You got black men screaming at black women. You have you have black women screaming at the black man. And so now you are and we are in a in a, in the same type of mode that the monster was in. We both did. And you're destroying yourself. Kicking down the door, setting things on fire. The female monster hates the male monster. The male monster hates the female monster. 
and the castle start coming down. There is no people. And this shows that the black man, this 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 new man, this shows that you are, are, are an unnatural person. You will never find in nature no male that will try to hurt and destroy his female. Nowhere. The only way you will see something like that and most times you won't even see that among domesticated animals. So this goes to show that the American black man, you and I are really, really, really sick. You and I are real monsters. No man, no male. I don't care what the female do. I don't care what she say or anything. No male tries to destroy his female. Mm, mm, mm. But the purpose of the monster was not for the male to love the black woman. It was not the purpose of the slave master to make the black woman love the black man. The purpose of producing this slave, this dark-skinned person, was for to be a perfect slave and to serve Caucasian people. And you still do that. You go to the Caucasian man's military. You sing and dance. You want to entertain them. I want to be a pop star. Pop star. I don't want to just sing for black folks. I want to sing for everybody. I want to sing for Masa. That's what you're really saying. I don't care nothing about the BET Awards. I want the Academy Award. Whatever Masa got. That's what it's about. And when you talk about getting a award from another black person, you start screaming. Ah, you really don't want that. I want a Grammy. I want an Oscar. I want an NBA ring. I want whatever Masa got to give. I don't want nothing from no nigga. I put that on the back shelf. I really don't care. This is what I want. Because that's how we was made. Monsters. Mm, mm, mm. But during the 60s and the 70s, the monster, whoo, the monster began to start coming into him and herself. And from a dead state, the monster began to understand, I need to get, in order to live for real, I need to get soul. Mm. Man, man, man. I need to get soul. So, in the 60s and 70s, we did have black power. But everybody, some of us didn't want to be called black. Many of us didn't want to be called Negro or colored. But we didn't mind being or having soul. This was the beginning or the step the process, the, the a natural process to give yourself an identity because deep down inside, you know you're not an African. You know that you're not some Native American. You know you have no connection to nobody. It was lost. It was never lost. You never had it. You never was a god. You never was a warrior. You never. The only thing we ever was was slaves. And you should not be ashamed of it. Because even though this is how we was created. Look at how we have progress. The only thing we need to do is break and understand how we was created. And break these mental bonds that keep us enslaved so that a new identity can be created thus no confusion thus now you can set up your you can have a purpose for your life have a vision and control your own destiny be yourself and in the 60s you was we was naturally doing it by calling ourselves soul people. It was racism that created 
black and African and all this other nigga and colored and all this. But when we began to embrace soul, soul is the essence of life, and we knew that we was dead inside. We want to bring life to this dead body, to the to, to a dead mind. 